So I quit my $50,000 Minecraft server. Hi, I'm Kite and I'm the founder and owner of Karma Network. A lot of you probably know me because most of my subscribers are you guys subscribing for the Karma Network trailers. And yeah, Karma Network, if you don't know me, is an anime RPG Minecraft network with just one server inspired by Sword Art Online. And yeah, after five years, six months and two days and $50,000, I have decided to quit. Yes, I quit Karma. And why did I do it? To be frank, I lost my passion and motivation for the server. But to explain why that is, first, we need to take a step back in history. Five years ago, Autumn, my faction members and I have just quit our second faction server and our member count was dwindling. Unlike ordinary factions, we were just a strange mix of people. We had builders, grinders, a devil worshipper, a Harvard student, weirdos that just like to hang out, PvPers, PvP montage makers, and an Australian. Okay, stay with me here. I swear this all ties in. After quitting our second faction server, I, the faction leader, decided that I wanted to make my own server. And as a huge weeb, I thought, why not make it an anime Minecraft server? One based off of Sword Art Online. And a hundred bucks and an MC Pro hosting server later, my faction Karma had its own server. Now, this was a time when the general player base knew little to nothing about server hosting, other than running Hamachi off their basement videos. Legit, my dumbass thought you could hop on Google and just download all of Hypixel's plugins. So yeah, after two weeks of grabbing random RPG plugins off of Bucket and building with my faction, doing random little setups and doodads, Christmas Eve 2015 comes along and my server was ready. Yeah, after two weeks, Karma Swordcraft Online was ready. Obviously, we couldn't just launch the server and expect people to show up, so we needed a trailer. And one of my real life friends biked over on Christmas Eve. And as the two people who dabbled in PvP montage making, we spent all night on Christmas Eve making the first trailer for Karma, which you can see playing in the background and was a complete garbage. Like, it was really bad. Basement potato quality, 20 FPS, not even. But yeah, that was the first trailer. So yeah, I can still remember the server launch to this day, the first server launch on January 1st, 2016. I woke up and there were around six to seven people online. I can't remember everyone, but I do remember Minor Victini and underscore Kirito underscore. Some of you guys may recognize them. They're the real OGs. And yeah, they were just playing that really badly built RPG server back then. But from there on out, it just kind of snowballed. Okay, 2016 to 2017. On a monthly basis, we were popping out floors, adding content, but little by little, the faction members were actually dropping out. Now, back then, and a little bit now, I was pretty egotistical and selfish, and while I loved hanging out with my faction, the server idea was mostly just all mine. Everyone did pitch in to help, but they were just killing time and they weren't actually invested in the idea itself. And after about a year of this, I was the only one left. At this point, I was considering quitting, like I really had only myself to work on the server and that was, you know, pretty hard, but there were players online and we actually had a few YouTubers who regularly played on the server. And that was Silvernips, who has since retired, and Kazuto Online, who is now an SEOMD gacha gamer. And both of them posted videos or series on our server quite regularly and they had around 10k subs at the time. So we were growing, and honestly, to this day, I'm still really grateful that they gave such a mediocre server any publicity at all. So yeah, with the money I made, or with the money the server had made, I decided to take the next leap of faith and actually start investing in builders, YouTubers, and developers, and a much larger map. to 2018. Now, this was when the gamble for the builders and the developers and the YouTubers and the giant map actually paid off. Both 1.0 and 2.0 were massively successful. We averaged around 100 plus players for the week following launch. And I think in 2.0 we hit our record and I think the record for any anime Minecraft server. I could be wrong, but we hit 143 concurrent players and I think that is the highest number of players any anime Minecraft server has ever gotten. Could be wrong, but yeah, who knows. 
But by the end of 1.0, I was actually dead tired and ready to quit because I was the only one working on the server aside from the people that I paid for their one-time jobs. And it took months and hundreds of hours just to get that floor out. And yeah, I was really tired. But it was also around this time that Isosceles, a server developer and now a server owner, contacted me and started developing plugins for the server. And it was also around this time that Sword Art Online Ordinal Scale came out. And I still think that is one of the best anime movies out there. And yeah, kind of just gave me the motivation to stick at it for just a little bit longer. So 2018 to 2019, these were probably the worst and most eventful years for Karma Network, not in a good way. This was probably around the time that I truly understood the complexity of running a Minecraft server. You had to have your own dedicated servers, your own developers, your own system administrators, and all of these were really expensive. Like I kid you not, these are all genuine careers that people live and eat off. Greg, later to be the second owner of the server, joined the staff team around this time. And we moved over to our own dedicated server and started looking at the whole serverscape a bit more professionally. Now, things took a turn for the worse around mid-2018. We learned that one of our staff members was downloading a map to use on his own server. Now, this was a map that my faction members and I had spent hundreds of hours building up and something we paid builders to add on to. So obviously we were very annoyed. He was asked to stop and swiftly demoted but after being warned and demoted, he was actually caught doing this a second time, and then he was banned. A month or two goes by, and we hear that he's continuing his plans, and at this point, I decided that this person just was not listening to us, so I issued him a cease and desist, which is basically the legal way of saying stop or you'll be sued. Now to summarize what happened next, because it's pretty much impossible for me to record this part without kind of blowing up, this person instead of apologizing or ignoring or doing anything else, what he decided to do was he hired a real life lawyer who basically attempted to get me to appear in a courtroom halfway across the country because this person was stealing the map that my faction members and I have created. So I needed to fly to a courtroom halfway across the country over Minecraft because someone else is stealing my Minecraft content. Obviously, I was pretty anxious and pretty depressed and pretty frustrated and annoyed over this whole situation. And very few people know this because I haven't told this story before. Like, there's, real, there's really no point for me to tell this to my players. But it was around this time that I really lost most of my motivation for the server. Like, who wanted to continue working on a server where they basically put their passion and motivation into? And what it got them was a court case across the country. Like, how, how is a 15-year-old supposed to explain that to his parents look i got called up to a courtroom across the country because someone else is stealing my stuff and i basically legally told them to stop so yeah it, it was pretty obvious that i was really demotivated at this point and basically what ended up happening was it cost the server a decent amount of money for our own lawyer to actually reach out to this lawyer and basically get the whole court case issue thing resolved without me going to court but yeah, my motivation was pretty much dead bottom around this time. So 2019, this was probably when my depressed and unmotivated state actually started showing in updates. Some of you guys may recall floors 5, 6, 7, and 8. I was really depressed at this point. For floor 5, my half-finished build, I hired a builder to complete. For floor 6, Sorb joined the staff team and content creator team around this time. And he actually did most of floor six on his own. And for floor seven and eight, that was just basically a treacherous grind for me. And the content became really stale. I didn't really have any motivation or passion or creativity to play around with quests. I didn't go and look for new features to add to the server. So basically it became the same old rinse and repeat of get end game item and then wait for the next floor and then get the next end game item and then wait for the next floor. And that's kind of how 5.0, 6.0, and 7.0 all went. So six months ago is probably when I could finally see the end in sight. We finished 7.0 and floors 7 and 8. It was also around the time that I decided I would give it my all just because of how lackluster the past few floors were. And I wanted to quit with every single update, but I just never ended up doing it. And instead of pumping out garbage content, to be frank, I would 
basically give the players a genuinely good update and quit for good because I knew that I could still put a lot of motivation and passion into the server, but it's not something that I wanted to do anymore. So I decided to spend the next three months perfecting floor nine because I always had this vision as a kid that floor nine would be this shattered floor with a bunch of biomes and a bunch of different like floating islands. It'd be a mix mash of all the things that we've done plus more. And I think I was pretty successful in that. And I spent another three months adding content all throughout floor nine and just seeing the reactions and play times of the 8.0 testers, I think it really paid off. While the players are just as selfish and toxic as ever, just seeing that there's content for them to enjoy and explore weeks into the update is good enough for me. Just looking at the content routes in 5.0, 6.0, and 7.0, and seeing that they're still looking for quests and items three weeks into the update without having to grind thousands of mobs, I know that they know this update was by far the best one yet. So to wrap up the long history of Karma Network, the first and only large-scale Swordcraft online server that was ever completed, we're full of bugs and we're always crashing, but it's a unique and amazing experience. So I lost my passion and my motivation for the server and Minecraft a long time ago, but what really kept me going for the past few years was the fact that there were players on the server at any given point in time. I just felt obligated to get that next update out because this was something that I started and something that I wanted to see through. And while $50,000 sounds like a lot of money, split between the developers and the server costs, I probably wouldn't have come close to scratching the poverty line if it was my means of income. Now just to make a comparison, if a fast food joint let me work 10,000 hours and they paid me $10 an hour to flip burgers, I would probably be $100,000 more in the green than what I've made off of Karma. And while it's never about the money, it's just also another factor why I can't really keep the server up. I have my future to think about, and honestly, I just no longer want to work on the server. And if I had to do it all over again, to be honest, I probably would quit the server on day one. One of the few things that I really regret about the server is that I didn't value my friends and my faction a bit more than the server itself. So yeah, as a college student, during the end of a pandemic, I'll probably relax and watch some anime, play some games, do normal things people my age do, which I have no idea what they do, but yeah. Maybe I'll upload a video from time to time and dream of it blowing up so it can make me a YouTuber. But all joking aside, I probably won't shut down the server or sell it off. What I'm really hoping for is that Someone that really enjoys playing on the server might want to make that switch from player to owner and take my place and make content for the server. They don't need to pay me any royalties or buy the server off of me. If, if they're interested in making content and they think they can do it, then please feel free to reach out to me and I will give you the server for free. And that was the history of Karma Network and why I quit my $50,000 Minecraft server. Honestly, what I realized throughout this video is that I suck at speaking and hopefully you enjoyed any part of this video at all because it was probably really boring. But since this is the last time that I could, I wanted to address my player base and basically give them a reason as to why I quit and what the server was like. So yeah, hopefully this was informative or entertaining to you. If so, then I think my goals are met. Yeah, see you next time. Peace.